What is up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. I'm Noah Strackbine, joined always by my main man, Stephen Thompson. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. We are coming back with the biggest topic of conversation revolving around the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that is obviously their offensive coordinator and offensive struggles as a whole. Mike Tomlin took the podium yesterday and had plenty to say plenty to dive into and uh i think he left some light on for some possible change or at least some hope for those who chanted fire canada on monday night is a beautiful day in the berg here once again it feels uh it feels like we're not getting teased with this fall weather anymore this is this is real this is here to stay how you feel my friend i feel good yeah i mean like you said i think we're right we're in the thick of everything. I mean, I kind of, oh yeah. you look up one day and Pitt's in week three. Oh, well, Pitt's in week four now. Steelers are in week three. Like, falls here, man. We're right in the thick of it. It's It kind of snuck up on me, but but we're right in the middle of football season. It felt like it felt like training camp started two weeks ago, you know? Dude, yesterday. It was crazy. I was actually just thinking about that. I looked at the clock because my sister's birthday is at the end of the month. And I was looking at the calendar. I was like, oh, it's almost... September and I was like, "Oh, it's September 20th. What are we uh what are we doing here?" It's it is. It's it's coming quick. I uh when it comes to Pitt, I I tell everybody like I I just forget that that first game happened. I I've referenced them going own 4 like 5 times and then I'm like, "Oh, they've uh they've won a they football actually, game. They've actually won a game. Yes, that's right. People yeah. forget. People do forget. Do we uh do before we dive into to Tomlin and Canada and everything? Do we blame Phil? Is this uh, at this point? Do we blame Phil for the struggles uh, that happened at Acrisure Stadium? Did he curse the old <laughs> Heinz Field? Oh man, I didn't even think about that. Like you know, some some spiritual stuff going on. That's like what I'm he, saying. He turned it into Boo City, and now that's just you that's call just out the fans. That's a bad item. A hundred. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, and it's also just. I mean, on his part, like. It's inviting more booze. Like, what What do you mean? Like, that's that's not how you... If you were concerned about being booed, that is not how you... I mean, telling someone don't do that is a perfect way to get them to do exactly the thing that you don't want them to do. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it has opened the floodgates because we're at a point now where... I mean, I was watching the Pat McAfee show yesterday, and I it was the first time I saw the clip from somebody who was out in the stands when the Fire Canada chants broke out. And like, I thought it was clear as day in the press box. I don't know how you get 75,000 people or what was the number? The number was like 67,000 people, 67,000 people to in unison chant five syllables. It was a five syllable chant. That is yep. ridiculous for how clear it was. I believe I really do. I think that you take that back. You follow the pattern. You follow the line. Phil started this. Phil 100% let the floodgates open. And hopefully it means that good things are coming, which is where we dive into where we start. Mark Tomlin took the podium yesterday. He uh, he didn't hold back at all. He, right from the jump, acknowledged that the Pittsburgh Steelers have some offensive struggles. He, this is his, his big quote that started off with plenty more that followed. Quote, we got, we got to get the mojo that we had in the preseason. We're playing when we're playing fast with confidence individually and collectively, we lost that to be blunt in the last several weeks. We're not getting the type of fluidity that we want in our starts. We're not teeing up possession down plays. We're being in advantageous, not being in advantageous possession down circumstances and really is making challenging to sustain drives and score points. Wow. Mike Tomlin is one giant run on sentence. I've just realized this. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to have knee-jerk reactions in terms of trying to make wholesale changes in an effort to change that outcome, but we do acknowledge that two is a pattern. We had two outings that are not up to snuff in that regard, and so that has our attention as we're preparing for the next one. That is, from an outside year, little. Two is a pattern. Cool. It is. We've all acknowledged this. It's been two and a half years of a pattern, I guess. My thing when I sat there... My eyes lit up, all the alarms went off, and I immediately had flashbacks to the last time Mike Tomlin said two is a pattern, which was when Gunnar Olszewski lost his job as a punt and a kick returner for fumbling not one, but two punts, and he was never the same again. Is this the beginning of the end for Matt Canada? Is this, I mean, 
the beginning of the end for change? Is this a step in the right direction, or is this just Mike Tomlin kind of talking and being Mike Tomlin? Well, I think I think you're onto something there where this is kind of the beginning of maybe not the beginning of this is him kind of drawing a line in the sand saying Yes. Look, we can't for whatever they're doing in the facility, they cannot ignore this publicly anymore. You know, they can't uh they can't kind of proceed as if, you know, they, there is always the expectation of progress because well, while there is the expectation of progress, it is they want progress. They haven't seen progress. So, you know, they're not expecting. I think uh, in past times when Matt Canada and Kenny Pickett and the offense have struggled, it's, well, we're growing. We're figuring things out. We're, we're going to get there. We're going to be there. Uh, they expect them to be there now. You know, they expect yeah. this offense to be there now, and it's not. And so I think that's what this acknowledgement was is that, okay, we're past a growth process. We're past, you know, working through growing pains and trying to work out the kinks like this is supposed to work right now and it's not. So I think that's what, what Mike Tom was talking about. I think this is kind of him drawing a line in the sand saying, look, this is – evaluations get a little more serious from here on out. Yeah, I agree. And I think some people took that as Kenny Pickett may you know have a timetable now or Kenny Pickett's expectations are growing. Tomlin was very clear that it starts with the coaching, that the coaching has to be better. That's how they improve. I think it was 100% directed at Matt Canada. And I also, I, I think Tomlin acknowledges that he's part of the game plan and that all the coaches as a whole are an issue right now. But I did not take that as anything other than Matt Canada has got to get his stuff together and we are running out of time to allow him to get his stuff together. And the fact that guys like TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith are winning games is as unacceptable as it gets. Like, I think the Steelers, they believed the hype. I think that was the biggest thing here is... Coming into the season, Deontay Johnson called Super Bowl. Kenny Pickett called Super Bowl. George Pickens called Super Bowl. Everybody was talking about how we're ready for a playoff run, how this team has everything that we need to go wherever or go the distance or as far as they could possibly take them. I have a hard time imagining that Mike Tomlin did not feel the same way. You know, I don't think that Tomlin came into the season with the expectation that, oh, well, you know, in two years, we'll probably be there. Like, no, you don't go out and get a guy like Quan Alexander last minute or sign Patrick Peterson and tell him, hey, we're probably going to suck for the next two years. But once you're gone, we'll be good again. No, you're talking to him and saying, hey, look, this is a Super Bowl team. This is a team that can go and run. We got all these pieces. We have a developing quarterback. Peterson said that when he signed. Like, there is so much that the Pittsburgh Steelers did this offseason and even during the summer that made you believe in them that I think they believed in themselves that much. And now they're at a point where they're at crossroads and they just, they just don't know what to do, which is the biggest question. What do you do? Like, do you make any changes? Mike Tomlin heard the fans, which I think is crazy. You know, we were, we were talking about it for the last literally 48 hours. Like that's all that's talked about in Pittsburgh right now is the, the chant of fire Mac Canada. He was asked about it. And unlike Kenny Pickett, unlike George Pickens, who I do not believe did not hear this, Mike Tomlin, headphones on, didn't matter, did hear it. This is what he had to say. Man, I, I appreciate their passion. Um, I share their passion. We all do. Um, man, we love our fans, man. They, they inspire us. Uh, they challenge us. Um, it's an awesome relationship. Man, we don't run from challenges. We run to challenges. Um, this is the sport entertainment business. It is our job to win and thus entertain them. And so, you know, we don't begrudge them for that. Um, we 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 want to we want them to be fat and sassy and spoiled. It is our job. Mike, Mike, you you share their passion. You share their concern about the way Matt's preparing the offense to play. I don't share their concern because of my perspective. Um, I'm a part of the process. When you're a part of the process, it's less troublesome to you. It is our job. He goes, and that is the biggest takeaway. Is it is the Pittsburgh Steelers' job to acknowledge what the fans want and make the adjustments to give them what they want. I want to say this, you know, and I, I do want to ask if you do see change coming with Matt Canada or if you see the, the hot seat being hot or if the Pittsburgh Steelers change their ways in any way. My thought as soon as he said this was very simple. Mike Tomlin and Art Rooney probably talk every single day, probably multiple times a day. Art Rooney cares about the fans. He cares about the fans a ton. He cares about the Steelers' way, obviously, but there's a line for everything. 
and Art Rooney wants the Steelers to win a Super Bowl. And on top of that, he wants to go to a home game that the Pittsburgh Steelers win and not have to hear them chant to fire his offensive coordinator. He understands that the, the fans are hitting a breaking point. He is not ignoring it. And I think that there has been conversations. I don't know this for certain, but if I had to guess, I believe that there has been conversations where Rooney and Tomlin have had to acknowledge that they are losing the fan base. They're not losing them permanently, but they're they're pissing them off by ignoring them when they are begging to make this change. Yeah, and it's tough because I don't think you ever want to be an owner who is, you know, for lack of a better term, held hostage by your fans. Like, yes. you know, an organization who has to make personnel decisions based off of what your fans chant at games. But I, I, I just don't... Uh, I think the fans can see something that they are, you know, that they haven't been willing to really publicly acknowledge. Um, yes. There's been a common denominator over the past three years when the Steelers have have struggled on offense, and it's been the guy calling the plays. So I think at some point you have to, you can only, you can't avoid that. You can only avoid that for so long. Um, I don't. I mean. I, when you get so deep into this, like it's hard to. When you're two and a half years in, yeah. it's hard to imagine like anything changing at, at that point, especially mid season. Um, because that's the other thing. Like, are, are we seeing anything new? Like, is is Matt Canada showing us some different side of him? No, it's just a continuation of the problems that have existed for a while now. So, you know, I, I, on one level, it's okay have they reached a breaking point? Do they understand, like, do, have they learned from any mistakes in the past or are they going to stick to their guns? I think that's when you get this deep into, into something like this, when their problem has existed so long, that's the only two outcomes is either someone learns or they stay stubborn. And I'm really not sure where they're going to fall on this, on this thing. Yeah, I agree. And just to say, like, just to touch on the hostage thing, cause I agree with you. And I think there are, some fan bases that do get held hostage because I think the Dallas Cowboys are like the prime example of that. Like they make almost all of their decisions. It seems like just by like knee jerk reactions, the Pittsburgh Steelers are the complete opposite of this, but I think the Steelers, they ignore their fans for a lot of this. You know what I mean? Like I was a kid growing up going to Steelers games and I remember vividly actually being my first ever Steelers game was the Steelers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. When it was David Garrard who was the quarterback of the Jaguars. He ate their lunch, man. It was it was embarrassing how bad the Pittsburgh Steelers just could not handle the Jacksonville Jaguars in the playoffs at home. And I remember the first time I'm ever at a Steelers game, I didn't even realize that you could hate your quarterback. And the bench Ben chance or the Charlie Batch chance were all game long. Like there was no there was no getting rid of them. But there's no reason to listen to those. You know what I mean? And I think like Steelers fans even know that where they're just like, yo, in the moment that pissed us off. We were ready for that. But where it's not it's not like it's not real. You know, and we acknowledge that if they ignore us, that's OK, because, you know, there's a reason for this. I could not tell you. I probably like I think if we took a poll and interviewed all 67000 people that walked into the stadium on Monday night, maybe a dozen would say, no, nah, I think Matt Canada should be the coordinator, you know? And I think that the Steelers will ignore dumb things like chanting to bench Ben at this point. It's, it's like almost like, like they, they understand there's a reason, you know, that's the difference is there's not a reason to bench your hall of fame quarterback. There's not a reason to bench Kenny Pickett. If, fans were chanting to bench Kenny Pickett right now because you just don't have a better option and you got to give that guy an opportunity. They have every reason and every right to want Matt Canada out of the building and to want somebody new. And they've been saying it for years now. And to, at this point, like everybody I think is acknowledging like, all right, yeah, we get it, man. We, uh, we've tried to defend this guy. We tried to defend the progress and all of this for two years. Now it hasn't worked. We, you know, we have nothing left to say to you. Like we have no more excuses on why this is happening. You said that there is no change coming. I don't believe that there is as well. Do you think that that, do you think there is a breaking point this season that the Steelers could get to where they do break that mold 
because Mike Tomlin's never fired an offensive court, never fired a coordinator in general during the season. Do you think that that, that there is a line that could be drawn where that changes? Yes. Um, it's a little, you know, this is going to be a terrible answer, but it's when you feel like Kenny Pickett is threat, like his development is threatened, right? Like it, when you have hit a point where you start to think, wow, Kenny might, Kenny might just not be it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think if you, it, it, it'll be a point before that you're not going to wait until, oh, well, Kenny's cooked. Let's get rid of. Let's get rid of the coordinator <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but it's when you're approaching that point where you think we're, we're in danger of this first round quarterback that we liked a lot and believed in a lot. It's getting to the point where he might not be able to, he might not be the guy that we think we are. He hasn't grown in the way that we thought we are. This might be a waste of investment at this point. That's uh, before you, it's gotta be well before you reach that point that you start to think, okay, like, Defending this guy, keeping him around. Continuity is not good if continuity is hurting this yeah. big investment that we put in in our first round talent at quarterback. Do you think that they are nearing that line? Do you think that they have started to move towards that line? No, I don't think so. Um, no. no, I mean, this is I wouldn't call this a make or break year for Kenny, but this is a this is a significant year for him, and we're only two weeks into it. Um, and I think you can even spin it as, you know, that touchdown to, to Pickens was a sign of life, a sign of progress in some yes. ways. So I think they can spin it that way. Um, I think when you get into these kind of softer parts of the schedule, that's when you can start to really give a, a little bit more of a realistic evaluation. That's when you actually have to have to see them do some stuff like this. You know, you hate to like, I hate to, excuse me, um, bring up like progress and everything, but if they kind of stay on a certain trajectory, if they continue to get better uh, like they did last year as the season progresses, if they can take advantage of a softer part of the schedule, that's yeah. that's when things start to turn around. But yeah, you got to you gotta actually be able to put up numbers against teams like the Raiders. Um, against When do they play Houston? Houston's coming up soon, right? Houston's next week. Yeah. Two weeks. So, next week. So that, next like, week. that's another big one, like – you should be able to throw all over Houston. Um, so l- let me ask this then. There's three games before the bye week. Is that a decision marker? Is that where, because I, I feel like if you're not going to fire, like, you know what I mean? I feel like once you get in the back half of the season, you're not going to do that. You know, yeah. why would you? Because even if, if you're a team that is even winning, like if you have a winning, like you're not going to fire your offensive coordinator and take a chance that like everything just implodes while you have four games left in the season and then you got to make a playoff run. Like that's just, that doesn't, yeah. both of us I think would agree that doesn't, that's not going to work. And the Steelers wouldn't even think about this, but they have an early bye week. Like they only play five games and then week six is the bye week. You go Vegas, Houston, Baltimore in those three games, Baltimore at home too, which I think is significant. If nothing changes, if this offense still looks just as bad as it did, is is that the is that like a marker where you're like okay well if they're gonna make a move it's gonna be then yeah I think so and if nothing for, for nothing else than convenience you know yes um like you you know I think they I mean I guess they didn't bench they didn't bench Mitch before the bye week but you know if you are <laughs> no, doing they, they would have waited if they could if Deontay didn't punch him in the face they probably would have waited yeah um but I think yeah if you're dealing with something like a coordinator change a coaching change really of any kind um. Five weeks is the best time to do it. Give yourself two weeks to to figure it out. Get everyone familiar with each other. Practice a lot before you actually have to put it on a field, like a little kind of mini training camp. Because the other thing is, I don't like you can't change your systems like wholesale no. at the bye week anyway. But you just have to make a few tweaks anyway. So I, yeah, I mean, bye week is probably if it doesn't happen by the bye week, if no change, if you know Matt Canada is still there after the bye week, I he's definitely sticking through the entire year. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's here forever. I think it does make sense. Like if they turn it around in the next two weeks, if they go to Vegas and then they look good, if they go to Houston, and they look good. If they beat Baltimore at home, that's huge. But if you come out of the break, you go Rams, which are right now, the Rams look, they, I mean, they look, they look better than the Steelers. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars at home, which is another challenge, but then you go the Titans, which I think is, 
not terrible. Pretty easy challenge. The Packers, which are huge, and then you go Green Bay and Cincinnati, both on the road. So you want to make a change that is a difficult part of your schedule, but one that you could get through, I think. You know, like it's not like I think you use the next three games to evaluate, okay, are we at bare minimum the best bad team? Because that stinks, but it's something that you could grow off of. And then you come out of that, and if you make the change, you say, okay, well, are we really the best middle ground team? You know, because I don't think that the Steelers are, you know, the best, best team. But I think that if you could beat L.A., if you could beat Jacksonville, if you could beat Green Bay, you're, and especially Cleveland and Cincinnati on the road, like, you've proven, like, okay, well, like, the middle of the pack were at the top of. But I don't know if that's where they'd stand currently but i agree if that's where they're going to make a change that's when that that's when it'll happen do you think if you had to guess right now you just you saying no yeah i mean it's kind of a a, a year i think it's a i'll believe it when i see it you know yeah Yeah. like we've i don't know this this just feels a little bit like a conversation that we've had before and it hasn't come to pass. I know that we had this conversation yesterday, actually. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And yesterday, last Friday, day before, and, the day before <laughs> and exactly one year ago at this time. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I, I'll believe it when I see it because, like I said, we've had this conversation before and it hasn't come to pass. I understand these circumstances are a little different just because time has kind of added pressure to, yes, to the situation, but I just, I can't see it. I, I, I don't know. I just, I get it. Things are bad, but I think these guys are stubborn, stubborn to yes. stubborn to a point. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And all you got to do is win, you know, like right. you, you blow out the Raiders, you blow out Houston. It's all good. Like right. he, Canada has secured his seat for the rest of the season. I don't think that's the right move, you know, necessarily to just give him that one. Oh, it's yours. There you go. There's your pass. But I think that's how the Pittsburgh Steelers will react to the situation. If they are bad, I'm very interested to see what the fan base is like. You know, you go to Cincinnati comes to Pittsburgh December 23rd. That's the last home game. If the Steelers are that bad all season long offensively, even if they're especially if they're scraping by, like if they're a team that's about to make the playoffs with their offense is scoring 14 points a game, I would love to see what that reaction is like. In the snow, cold, you know what I mean? Like, just people still fired up, drinking extra beer because they're going to try to get warm. Would be very interested to see what that environment is like. What's up, guys? I have super exciting news to share with you. We have merchandise from T-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, and nutties, and plenty of designs from Pickens to Picket, Mooth, Bleed Black and Gold, and of course, all of your all Steelers talk gear, all available at blackandgoldapparel.myspreadshop.com or on the store tab at our YouTube page. We cannot thank you guys enough. We would not be here without each and every one of you. And it feels awesome to be able to represent the AST brand and to spread that representation out to all of Steelers Nation. We know that you guys and us, we are one, and this has been one hell of a ride. Again, we cannot thank you guys enough. Check out everything at blackandgoldapparel.myspreadshop.com or on the YouTube page or the store tab, excuse me, on our YouTube page to get all your AST gear and whatever T-shirts, sweatshirts, shorts, nudies, coffee mugs that you're thinking. Again, thank you guys. More of what Mike Tomlin said. Huge news for the offense, I believe. He acknowledged that uh, maybe it's time Jalen Warren gets a little bit more going on here said that you know his progress is natural and this is a natural step in the development or whatever you know classic Tomlin but what he did say pretty straightforward was that he anticipates Jalen Warren is going to get more of a workload kind of be on the field more I think we saw that Jalen Warren outside of George Pickens was the offense you know like he was the most impressive person if you named four guys that didn't play defense because I think the defense like Alex Highsmith and, and, you know, you can name a lot of them Mm. outside of the defense. There were four MVPs in that game. That was Presley Harvin, Chris Boswell, George Pickens, and Jalen Warren. And all four of them did everything they possibly can. Warren finished the night with six rushes for 20 yards. Not great. 
but he also had four receptions for 66 yards. And a couple of those were like real ground and pound, catch a one yard pass, take it 15 yards and fight your way through four things on third and the, you know, 11, mm -hmm. um, huge moments. Good move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, and also I have to acknowledge something. Um, yesterday I made the comment and it was, it, I just got tweeted at and tweeted at and tweeted at that. I made the comment, um, that the Pittsburgh Steelers running game was like not terrible and that it was kind of like, I kind of blame Matt Canada for it. I watched the tape again last night. I was, I was beyond off on that take. That was a God awful take. First off the third and one play. I don't know if it was supposed to be an option. It looks like an option. You hand that ball to Najee Harris. That's a first down. That was a hundred percent on Kenny Pickett. Um, the offensive line atrocious. I Isaac Siamalu. What the hell happened, man? You just don't play football anymore. And Mason Cole, unfortunately ain't it but the play calling i don't know if it was necessarily the play calling i think it was a lot of the offensive line is trash right now um when it comes to the running game which is surprising because they do well against or for the pass you know for the most part but i i do have to acknowledge that because i as they were coming in i was just like all right all right let me sit down let me rewatch this and yeah. i was like oh yeah no that was uh this is a lot of blame after the game a lot of blame to go around i don't think you were completely off base with saying that it's some part some part of the blame is on that Canada. Yeah, no, I look at I agree. Like I, I, I appreciate that. I agree. But I, you know, usually I you know, you know me. Usually my schedule is I come home, I watch it again before the next day. So I have a fresh outlook by the time we we talk. There was zero chance I was doing that at three in the morning. There was just, you know, just <laughs> wasn't happening. Um there was barely any chance I was doing it last night. But after I after I was called out a couple of times, I was like, all right, all right, all right, we'll do it. And uh yeah, I was wrong. So, you know, I'll acknowledge that. Back to Jalen Warren probably going to take more of a workload you see this as do you see this as a positive for the offense and do you see this as a bit of a, a change of the guard between him and Najee or just a why would we throw the football when we just when we have Jalen Warren and Najee Harris um you know I was watching that game and it was it was early in the in the first quarter maybe after Jalen took his first catch and I was like nice play it's good. Doesn't really change how I feel. And just the more it happened and the more I watched like Najee get like stuff trying to go to the edge. Yeah. Uh, just like mm, there is like, like I, I still don't think Najee's a bad player. No. Uh, I'll stand by that. I don't think the offensive line did him any favors, but I think Jalen is the type of player better suited to make up for some poor offensive line play as opposed to Najee. Um, and that's just where you are right now. You're sitting behind a an offensive line that still has some strides to make, still has some some play some improvements to make. So you got to run with the guy who gives you the best option to kind of overcome that and, and give them some time to to figure things out. And that's Jalen. So I, I I do see this as a little bit of a demotion for Najee. It's not. Yeah, it's not completely taking him out of the rotation. I don't think. I think we're a long, long ways from that. Um, but you know, Jalen has earned this. That's that's like first of all what it is. Uh, Jalen has been really good, and he has earned the right to take more carries. He's been really good. He's been. I think he. I think I did the the math on it. He like I think uh, he had a third of their total yards for that game. Total offensive really? yards. He yeah, I. Yeah, so like between. Uh, like twenty rushing yards and sixty something. Yeah, eighty six rush. Yeah, that would be a third because yeah. they finished with like just under three hundred yards. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, he, there's no way you can keep a guy like that. You know, just you can't tell me that's a that's just a situational back. Like he's got he's got to touch the ball more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I just think that for what the Steelers try to do with their running game, you know, a lot of outside runs, a lot of shotgun handoffs, pitches that just don't make any sense. But for what they try to do, it is so the complete opposite of who Najee Harris is as a running back that it just doesn't make sense. And again, just like you said, like Najee's not a bad running back and Najee will do what you want him to do. And he'll break those like 15 yard runs from time to time like he did the other day. But Najee isn't a guy that needs 20 touches a game. You know, he's just not. You give him 10 touches a game, 12 touches a game, you feel really good. And then you give not our Jalen Warren. 20 touches a game you feel even better like he's the guy that especially in this offense where Kenny Pickett is struggling there is really only one super reliable wide receiver right now 
And I, there would be two, but Allen Robinson just didn't, you know, they just were like, who is that guy? Why would we throw him the football? Pat Fryer meets the same way. Like why they were removed from the game plan. I have no idea, but if that's how you're going to handle the situation, then you want Jalen Warren out there because you want to win through your running game. You want to win through those explosive runs. And like, you could, you could mimic the Cleveland Browns. Like Nick Chubb is not a three yard rusher. He's just not like people want to compare him and Najee Harris and use that as a defense. They are two totally different running backs. Ch- Nick Chubb and N- Najee Harris, I agree, are both like running into brick walls and it's got to suck. But Nick Chubb will get you 15 yards on that run. You know, Najee Harris will get you four. And Jalen Warren's a guy who. I mean, even for how small he is and how elusive he is, like there were those catches where he literally had four. He, the, by the time he was getting tackled, he had four yards to get the first down and he still got the first down more than once. Like he is a guy who's going to fall forward. who's going to get those extra yards. It does for, for where the Steelers are offensively and how much they need to improve and rely on the running backs. Jalen Warren is is hands down your answer. And then use Najee as a guy to make sure that Jalen Warren is fresh. And I just think that works so much better. You know, do you see that? Do you see the change of guard kind of happening this week? I, Najee will not be removed as the starter, obviously. Yeah. Like he's still going to run out the tunnel. He's still going to be the guy on the depth chart. But do you see, you know, do you see a change where even if it's not this week, if it's coming, do you see the the adaptation coming where it's at some point Jalen's out, out touching Najee? Yeah. I think it's going to be a real slow drip, but it's we're going to wake up in, I don't know, week six or seven or something, and, and all of a sudden Jalen's going to be the one getting, yep, you know, 15 carries and then another 10 targets out of the backfield. Um, well, Najee and, – and that's the other thing. Like, Najee – I think we might have touched on this on Tuesday. Um, but Najee came today. in – no, today's Wednesday. Today's, wow. today's Wednesday, buddy. Yeah, no, I, I know my days. I know my yeah. days. Um, <laughs> but and, and Najee came in in that fourth quarter, and he was able to rip off a couple chunk plays. Like, that seems nice, like, to have a yeah. big power back who can be your closer, be your finisher. Well, you know, Jalen, you use Jalen's speed and his explosiveness throughout the rest of the game. Like, there's a world where both these guys exist in the same offense, and they are really productive. It's just maybe not exactly how we thought it would be at the beginning of the year in training camp. Yep. I agree. I agree. Like it just, if you flip the script, if you, and, it, and that's the thing is if you remove where they were drafted, Jalen Warren is the starting running back in Pittsburgh. And the Mike Tomlin says it all the time, how you got here doesn't matter unless your name's Najee Harris, you know, like that's just, that's just how they handle the situation. It's, it makes so much more sense. You know, Chris Johnson, Ladarius white. Was it, did I get that name right? I don't know. You don't even. Know I don't know who, who you're talking about. I know uh, who Chris Johnson is, but I don't know who Ladarius White is. Nick should be shaking his head down there too. Is it, are you talking not. about that? Yeah, USC guy. Uh, yeah, Lendell White. Lendell White. Thank you very yeah, much. The I Titans. The Titans duo. Come on, you're not. We know. This is. This, yeah, I watched that before. thirty for thirty on a uh, on USC. I know who that is. <laughs> I wouldn't have known him from that. I would have known him from Titans NFL days. NFL football. Yeah, you were like uh, younger. Younger than me, I guess. I was I was young when it happened. Um, I I look at it like those two. You know what I mean? Chris Johnson was the dude who's the fastest guy in the field. He gets you 60-yard runs. White's the guy that's going to score all the touchdowns. He's going to get you third and short. He's going to be utilized like that. Utilize N- Jalen Warren and Najee Harris like that. Stop trying to go the other way around. Like, stop trying to stop trying to be a different football team than the rest of the NFL and just be the NFL. You know, the NFL is this is what they do. They do everything a specific way. It works very well. The Steelers are like, well, those six times we won Super Bowls, we did it the other way. And you're like, nobody cares. OK, the NFL is changing. Change with it. You will win more Super Bowls. This is why you have not won a playoff game in seven years, six years, something crazy like that. It's got to it's got to change. I do. So I agree with you. I expect it to be a slow drip, but I expect that drip to change. Last thing I want to talk about here. Minka Fitzpatrick ended up at the hospital. Thoughts and prayers to him, obviously, uh, has been released for a chest contusion. At some point, there was, uh, I think it was on the broadcast that there was video of him like throwing up in a trash can. Some people were saying it was blood. I don't know. I have no idea. This is all speculation. Mike Tomlin says he should be fine. We'll see how the week takes us. I kind of got the vibe that Minka might not play this weekend. 
I get it's the the Raiders. They're not looking great, but the Steelers aren't looking great. How how big of a blow is this for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Like you're already down Cam. DeMonte KZ and Keanu Neal would start with Elijah Riley coming off the bench. Shout out Elijah Riley for making that huge, crucial fourth down sack. My man, killing it all summer long, continued to kill it. Reason why he made the roster. You look at the team and just say this is a huge blow. You think they could get through it. You know, at what point are too many superstars being removed from this defense? I think it is both a huge blow and something that they can survive. Nice. Um, I, yeah, what a combat. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, I just think the, the competition gets to a point where, yeah, you can live with like DeMonte KZ is a starting caliber safety on any team in the NFL right now. I think that's probably true about Keanu Neal too. Like yeah. that's, um, so I think you're perfectly capable of getting by. I also think Keanu gets like, he played much better against Cleveland than he did against, uh, events San Fran. I mean, that's true for the entire team, but. I think there's something to him getting more comfortable with this, with this defense, and you know, getting some game reps underneath him. That's that's really helped him out. So, yeah, you hate to lose Minka. I think it's the difference between like I I think they're going to beat the Raiders this uh, this weekend. Um, I think it's the difference between you know, winning by a touchdown or winning by you know three points or something like that. Yeah, I could uh, I could agree with that one. It's the difference. You know, it's like, you know, is Jimmy Garoppolo throw a touchdown or does he? throw an interception you know like I think that's where that's where it lands like does Josh Jacobs have huge like I just think it's like the small things like it's like where is Minka going to make the impact but I think I agree with you as a grand scheme it is a good week to you know be down a guy like that you got to start having other guys step up you know like good thing the Steelers do have a lot of veteran presence but Minka's replacing Cam is difficult but you had the options Replacing Minka is nearly impossible just because of who Minka Fitzpatrick is. Like, he doesn't play defensive tackle. He's not a one-trick pony. He is Minka Fitzpatrick. You could put him as an edge rusher. Chances are he's going to make it work, you know, just because he's Minka Fitzpatrick. It's, it's, a, it's a huge blow if they do lose him, but I agree one that they could overcome. Very excited to see what Keanu Neal could do in, like, an expanded role. I thought KZ played well, too. I mean, if you're taking hits from Nick Chubb and standing up, I mean, yeah. All the credit to you, you know, and then Elijah Riley coming off the bench. I do have faith in that too. a tough, huge blow, but I, I agree with you. One that could, yeah. one that could be solved, I guess. Yeah. And it's a bigger blow if it's, you know, multiple weeks or something like that. You yeah, can, yeah. I think yeah. you can definitely survive one week. I don't think that's a problem at all. No, I agree. I agree. This is, and, and the next, even if it's two, like you're going the, the Las Vegas Raiders and the Houston Texans, like. You know, be right. concerns are very minimal. And if Minka Fitzpatrick's the reason that you lose to Jimmy Garoppolo or CJ Stroud, well, your problems are ginormous. So, yeah, you, know, you take that from as it is. As long as he's back from Baltimore, I think that's uh, that's what you're aiming for if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, thoughts and prayers go out to him. Hope he's doing well. Uh, hopefully I get to talk to him today and get a clearer picture. With that said, we're heading out of here. Thank you guys so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash All Steelers Talk, and find us anywhere you get your podcasts. As we move through the week, check out everything at allsteelers.com. And as Pitt gets ready for, I mean, what is hopefully a bounce back win, chances are, yeah, we'll see what happens against the North Carolina Tar Heels on Saturday. Find all that at InsideThePanthers.com. We will be back on Friday. Enjoy another beautiful day in the Berg. Peace.